I hope you're excited. We're going to get rolling here in a second in the message, talk about a lot of good things tonight. we got a lot of good stuff to cover. But before we do, I want to start with prayer for one, and then got a few announcements, and we're also going to play a game tonight. So want to go quickly. You don't want to too long on the video so you can have time with your groups. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and start praying. God, um, we're just so grateful for you. We're grateful for just all that you're doing in this world. We're grateful that, that you're still involved. I know it seems like there's just uh, so much pain, so much suffering in the world right now, so many things to be stressed out, but you are. You're still involved. You're a God of the, the peaks and the valleys, and just help us to understand that more. And through these characters and through what we're going to learn about uh, in your word, Lord, and what you did uh, when you came to earth, uh, Lord, help that to apply to our lives so that we could take it out and we could use this for nutrients to go and live our, our lives the way you would have us do that. So please be with us tonight as we get into the word, as you challenge us and to do great things for you and your kingdom. And all these things I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hey, I want to encourage you as a group to be praying for our nation. Obviously, today's a big day, uh, the change in the White House, and I know a lot of people are um, stressed out about that. A lot of people are worried about what's going to be happening the next four years. Uh, here's what I want to tell you. Nothing's going to change with God being on the throne, and we know that for certain, and I hope you trust in that. But it doesn't change the fact that we could be praying for unity, and we could be praying that our leaders um, would, would give opportunity for us to uh, know God more fully and have those freedoms in our country. So be praying for that um, because we know the dark one, the evil one, he doesn't want that. And, and we're going to combat that as much as possible. Um, so quick, real quick uh, announcement again. Um, this is the only announcement we've had for a while, but I want to keep sharing this. We have our winter retreat. We're going to be going to Living Waters at, towards the end of February, February 19th. Uh, through the 21st, and um, you're invited. We want you to come. We still got plenty of space to do this. We actually, we need to get more uh, teenagers involved. So, hey, if you have a friend who wants to go on this retreat that you think would want to go on this retreat, please invite them. We want them to come. Again, don't let money be the issue. If you need a scholarship or help with that, please let us know. We would love to um, help people as much as we can uh, to come to this event. It's not about the money. It's about people coming to know Jesus Christ. And I also want to, um, I've told you this, but I want to let you know again, I'm going to be bringing my youth pastor, the guy I grew up under uh, for many years. And one of my best friends, his name is Joel Byers. He's an ugly mug over here. Uh, he's got a beautiful family, though, and, and we're encouraged to have him come up all the way from Texas. It's going to be hilarious watching him freeze his tail off, but he's going to do a great job. Uh, I really believe that. So I hope you're looking forward to it. I know I am. Leaders, don't forget to sign up, too, if you're going to do that as well. All right, so that's, that's our, our announcements for, for right now. Um, I want to go ahead and do a game, okay? Now, there's all different ways that you could do this game. Uh, so it's totally up to you as a group. If you're meeting in a large group and stuff, you might have to get creative on how you do this. But what you, what you could do is you could pick one person, one person from the group, and what you're going to do is you're going to try to guess what they would pick, okay? Now, you separate the room in two different areas. You could say uh, this one, uh, and it's kind of like would you rather. So I heard, I heard a funny one that's not up here. Would you rather... Uh, be attacked by a hundred horse-sized ducks or one horse-sized duck, all right? Would you rather be uh, attacked by either one of those? So you would pick one side of the room, and you could say this side of the room here is a hundred-sized horses, or hundred-sized duck-sized horses, all right? So little bitty horses, if you can imagine. Would you rather be attacked by a hundred of those, or would you rather be attacked by one duck-sized horse? Okay, does that make sense? So you would split that up, and let's just say you are, um, you are in David Tarr's group, and David's going to stand up in front of y'all, and he's going to be the person, and you have to guess what he would have picked, okay? And if you didn't get it right, you got to go sit down. So that's one version that you could play with this game. Or you could just see what people would like, and you could uh, pause it and be like, okay, what would you pick? You know, would you rather be attacked by 100 uh, duck-sized horses or, 100, or, or one uh, duck-sized horse, if you can uh, say it that way? I think I've said that right. I, I feel like I change it every time. But, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to have them come over to the screen. You'll see them on your screen, and you could pick that. So I always like the system of elimination because you get one winner, Maybe um, if, if someone won in your group, I'd be happy to give them candy. Uh, just let me know, okay? 
All right, so let's go through these real quick. And at the end of them, if you want me to be the person and you want to try to guess what Billy would pick, I'll tell you right at the end before we change slides, okay? That's another way you could do that. So let's go ahead. Let's see the first one up there. All right, would you rather be a famous rapper or a famous singer? I feel like those are kind of the same thing. <laughs> you could be one without the other, right? Uh, but yeah, famous rapper or famous singer. So you could say a famous pop star or a famous rapper, right? That could be another way of saying it. All right, so I'll give you a few minutes to think about that. Try to figure that out as a group. Maybe maybe you're still trying to figure out what how you want to play this game. Feel free to pause the video. That's totally okay. Would you rather be a famous rapper or a famous singer? For me, definitely a rapper. Definitely a rapper. So that's what I would have picked. All right, let's go to the next one. Like I said, feel free to pause them if we're going too fast. Would you rather win America, American Idol or American Ninja Warrior? America, American Idol or man, American uh, Ninja Warrior? That's a hard one, in my opinion, honestly. I think it would be awesome to be able to, like, climb things like a monkey. I mean, that skill can come in handy all the time, you know, be that fit to be able to win that. That is, if you've ever watched it, incredibly hard to win, for sure. But American Idol, I mean, think about the fandom, right? I mean, you would be pretty famous, right? Like, only person I could even remember who won American Idol is Kelly Clarkson, right? She's kind of famous uh, still to this day. Uh, yeah. So which one would you rather win? I think for me, I would pick American Ninja Warrior because, like I said, it'd be fun to climb things like a, like a monkey. All right. All right. So let's go. Would you rather perform at the Super Bowl halftime show or play football in the Super Bowl? Hmm. Kind of interesting. I wonder what people would have picked. What would people pick? Survey says... <laughs> All right, I'm going to go and tell you what I would pick. I would pick the Super Bowl, playing the Super Bowl all day long, all day long. No one remembers the halftime show. Come on, for real. I mean, they remember some slip-ups, if you know what I mean. Some of you are even too young to know what I'm talking about. But uh, most of the time, no one remembers that. All right, let's go to the next one. Would you rather be an only child or have 10 siblings? Hoofta. <laughs> Some of you know what that's like, maybe. Would you rather be an only child or have 10 siblings? Which one would you rather have? I feel like this is too easy. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Only child all day long. Who wants 10 siblings, right? Think about all the pass, pass me downs or hand me downs. I guess it could be fun. You know, you, you, you have your own uh, basketball team if you want to look at it that way. You know, <laughs> you have friends and stuff. But, uh, I mean, let's just be honest. Having that many siblings, whoo. I'm kind of interested if any of y'all pick that one. All right, next one. Would you rather ride the bus to school or walk to school? I guess it all depends on where you live, right? Walk to school or ride the bus? Hmm. Pause it if you need to. I'm about to give my answer. The bus. I would definitely ride the bus. I hate walking. Who wants to hike, right? That's lame. Especially in the winter. Man, it would be brutal. Okay. Would you rather eat spicy wings or bite into ice cream? What kind of, what kind of question is this? I don't know. So maybe some people really like spicy wings. Um, but ice cream, for sure, right? Let's go to the next one. Would you rather be prom king or queen or valedictorian? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Prom king or queen, so have the popularity or the brains. Sometimes you could be both, right? It's not impossible. But if you had to pick one, which one would you pick? I would definitely pick Victorian because, you know, who doesn't want to be smart, right? I think both of these were out of reach for me, so. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Would you rather be your uh, family dog or a wild wolf? <laughs> who thinks of this stuff? All right, family dog or a wild wolf? Okay. Hmm. Let you lock in your answers real quick. Three, two, one. Wild wolf all day, right? I mean, that's just I'll be a bad dog, right? That's gonna be that'd be fun, right? Run, be the king of the king of the forest, kind of. If you think of it, nothing messes with wolves out there, hardly at all. All right, let's go on. Would you rather live a hundred years in the future or a hundred years in the past? Man, I've heard this one before. This is a very hard, hard question, in my opinion. 
100 years in the past or 100 years in the future. Here's the thing I would kind of appeal to you. you. Think of it this way. You know what you're going to expect 100 years in the past. You have no idea what's going to happen 100 years in the future, right? Could be better or it could be way worse, right? You never know. Um, maybe you've seen Umbrella Academy, right? That, that kind of uh, plays around with that idea. I thought that was a really neat uh neat idea that they had there but uh 100 years in the in the future 100 years in the past lock in your answer answers uh for me the past that'd be pretty cool that'd be pretty cool to go to the past all right would you rather host saturday night live or be the bachelor or the bachelorette Ooh, man i think both of those are kind of kind of tricky because I could see it either way, right? There's a lot of pressure either way in that. <sighs> Lock in your answers. Three, two, one. For me, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. That would be a lot of fun. You know, have a good time. Would you rather spend a day without your phone or a day with no people at all? <laughs> this is going to make me really sad. <laughs> right? Which one is that, Brady? Both? <laughs> Both out your phone. I'm going to the boundary water. See you later, people. <laughs> All right. Would you rather spend a day without your phone or a day without with no people at all? Huh. I hey, if you have my cell phone number, I would love to hear your answer on this one. I'm kind of curious to to hear the answers on this one. All right. So let's lock it in. For me, a day without my phone all day. That would be that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Be able to get away from things. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. Would you rather have super strength or super hearing? Yeah, either one of those would be awesome to have, right? All right, so lock your answer. Three, two, one. Super strength for me. Super strength for me. Would you rather be a famous songwriter or a famous drummer? Hmm. Yeah, singing ain't your thing. And I know for me, I'm a horrible singer. So if I was famous, hopefully I'd be good at it, right? So, but being a drummer, that's just, that's like probably the coolest guy on the band, right? Everybody loves the drummer. All right, so three, two, one, lock it in. I think, uh, I said singer uh, and songwriter here. I'd probably pick the drummer. I'd probably pick the drummer. That'd be cool over the songwriter. All right, is that the last one, Brady? Nope. All right, would you rather take every vacation to Disney World our New York City. Wow. So I've never been to Disney World, but I have been uh, to New York City. Really cool place. Um, so I'll let, you, I'll let you lock it in. Ready? Three, try to guess mine if you want. Three, two, one. Disney World all day on that one, right? New York was just too much for me. It was cool. Once a lifetime thing. Don't need to go back. <laughs> all right. Would you rather have a mansion or a private jet? Man, these are good questions. I guess a private jet, you can go anywhere. Mansion, you know, you can have a really nice house, you know, live in. I guess, it, it, you know, if we're hypotheticals here, you don't have payments for either. That's kind of nice, right? All right, so one, two, three, lock it in. For me, the jet all day, right? Be able to go anywhere I want to in the world. That'd be pretty sick for the most part, right? Go anywhere. All right. Man, there's a lot of these. Would you rather never lose a sport game or never lose an argument? Ooh. <laughs> this one's very hard for me if <laughs> you know me at all. This is a really hard one. All right, let you think about it. Lock in your answers. Three, two, one. Some of you probably won't be surprised in this. Never lose an argument. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> I think I don't lose very many arguments, though, though. I don't know. Uh, would you rather date someone really quiet or someone really loud? Hmm, both of those could be really annoying. <laughs> really annoying. Someone really quiet or really loud. Let your lock in your answers. Three, two, one, lock it in. Really quiet for me. Really quiet, right? All right. Would you rather work for your parents or teach at your high school? Hmm. Depends on what your parents are doing, right? I don't know. You know, you know what uh, our teach at your high school, you know how bad the kids are in your high school or how good they are, right? Maybe you're homeschooled and you're like, it works either way, right? <laughs> All right, so lock it in. Three, two, one. I think teach at your high school, I think that'd be pretty cool. That wouldn't be too bad for me. 
Is that the last one? No. Would you rather eat your favorite meal every day or never eat again? What? <laughs> Is this a real question? Did I read that right? Would you rather eat your favorite meal every day or never eat it again? My bad. I read that wrong. Eat it again. Hmm. So I have it every day. Or never be able to eat again. So you'd get probably pretty sick of your favorite meal after a while, I guess, is the way they're going there. Uh, let's lock it in. Ready? Three, two, one. Eat my favorite meal every day. It would get boring, but at least I, I'm going to be able to eat it, right? Would you rather sing in front of the whole school or be in a spelling bee in front of the entire school? I already know my answer on this one. <laughs> sing in front of the... This would, both of these would really suck for me, for, for sure, because I'm horrible at spelling and singing. Uh, but but we'll, I know which one I'd pick. All right. Lock it in. Three, two, one. I would rather sing in front of the whole school than do a spelling bee, right? That would be horrible. I guess, you know, if they put me, like, in the uh, beginning rounds, I would lose it either way, I guess. All right, would you rather never wear deodorant or really, or really bad, uh, have really bad dandruff? Never wear uh, deodorant or have really bad dandruff? Man, both of those would suck. Both of those would be horrible. Um, for me, I would rather have really bad dandruff, right? You know, wear a hat, you know? <laughs> You can't, you, smell is more hard to, to mask, I guess, you know. I would much rather do that. Okay. Would you rather be the oldest child or the youngest child? Oldest child or the youngest child? All right, lock in your answers. Three, two, one. For me, I would much rather be the oldest child, for sure. All right. How many of these are there? Would you rather eat out by yourself or eat at home with your family? Lock it in. How, Brady, how many more we got? All right, we're not doing all these. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. There's seven more, so I apologize, all right? Um, but so which one would you pick? Would you rather eat out by yourself or eat at home with your family? Hmm. Me? I would rather be the family. All right, was this a funny one? Would you rather have terrible gas all the time or burp out loud constantly? <laughs> Man, these hypotheticals are horrible. All right, so so let's see. Which one did you do? Lock it in. Terrible gas all the time or burp out loud constantly. I have a really good explanation for why I'd pick this one. All right, so lock yours in. Three, two, one. Mine would be gas. You know why? Because then I could blame someone else. <laughs> all right, with that, we're going to get into the message. I'm going to go ahead and pray again, get our hearts ready. I wanted to tell you, too, um, this would be a great time, too, if you want to stop, maybe pause this video and come back to it. Um, I put the uh, worship songs in an email to all the leaders, so and they're just links that you can click. You can go there now and click on those if you want, if you want to do. There's just two two worship songs. Michelle picked those out for us. She did an awesome job. Um, but, but yeah, uh, you can stop and do worship, or you can do that at the tail end. Either one is fine. Uh, but we're going to go to get in the message, so let's go ahead and pray. God, I come to you, and I just thank you, Lord, for fun stuff, for things, uh, the what-ifs of the world, Lord. And it's always fun to think about those things. But God, help us to now just take some time to get serious about who you are, Lord, what you've done through these people's lives that we're going to learn about today. Uh, Lord, we're so grateful for um, the Chosen series, Lord, This uh, th these hypotheticals, right, the things that could have happened around the lives of the people in the Bible. And as we, um, as we speculate, as we talk about these, and we talk about the real things and the things that weren't real in this video, Lord, help us to be encouraged that these were definitely real people and that we can learn from them. So Lord, speak through me. Help me to encourage these people with your word and to be uplifted by it and, and as long with me too, Lord. I, encourage me as well with that as well. So God, we're excited to see what you have for us today and can't wait for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so remember, you can pause and you can go to the worship video now if you want. Let's go ahead and get in the message. So if you came with us last week, we started the series, the Chosen series. And uh, we talked about, the, in that series, it was a video, and it was quite long. And I heard a, a bunch of different feedback. It was probably 50-50. I heard a lot of people said, I loved it, I liked it, I watched it before, I could watch it again, and, and it was good. And then I heard some people said, I, I couldn't follow it very well. You know, I, I didn't understand what was going on. Which I totally get, right? Any um, any kind of 
uh, stuff like that where it's streaming, you know, and it's a whole series of things. Sometimes you got to, and that's why we binge watch things, right? Because it's like, oh, I, I got to know more. I got to figure out what's going on. And we're not going to be necessarily able to do that. Now, you can go home and watch it and watch the next one if you want, and, and I'm totally okay with that. But but that's that's the problem with stopping midway and maybe not getting the whole answer fulfilled. I'm going to tell you that that will happen you'll start to understand more. And even today, as I kind of fill the gaps and help you understand who these characters were. Um, but that's also the benefit of knowing the Word, knowing the Bible. And I'm not trying to point any fingers. I know some of you are very young, and maybe you're new to faith, or maybe you've never um, uh, heard anything about Jesus. I can understand how that might be confusing in that. So hopefully today, we're going to bridge the gaps, help you understand who these people are a little bit more. And we'll do that every week. We'll come along and we'll explain it a little bit more and pull and drive out what God might have for us and what he's trying to teach us through these uh, people and what that happened in their life or maybe what didn't happen, but maybe we could speculate on as well. So I want to come up first and I want to tell you, there's a lot of creative licensing, licensing going on here. And what I mean by that is, believe it or not, most of the things in that first one, not all of it, but most of the stuff in that first one was stuff that we don't know at all if it happened. It's all speculation. It's all being creative and saying this could have happened. And I'll kind of point some of those out for you. But not everything you watch that video happened in the Bible that way. All right? And that's totally okay because they're not trying to say this is how it exactly happened. What they're trying to do is fill the gaps, help it come home a little bit more, and help us realize that these were real people. They had a real culture. They were living in a real part of time, and they experienced real things and interacted with Jesus, which is incredible to think about. They interacted with God in the flesh, and there's things that we could take away from this. So the first one up, and the first character that we kind of get uh, more accustomed to is the religious leader, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, okay, so you see the picture of this guy, older looking guy, very stoic, you know, and when we first see him, he's like praying, he's going down a cart uh, down the road, and he's interrupted by the Romans. Nothing, we, that is not a story in the Bible whatsoever. It's a speculation, like I said, could have happened. No one asked him to call out people with taxes and different things like that. Uh, we don't even know if he was that high up as a religious leader. And I, I'll tell you from what my study in the Bible, probably not. He probably wasn't that high up. There's probably people above him that more likely would have been the person that they called on to do that. But, but so Nicodemus, though, it's okay to depict him that way because those were real things that probably happened. The Romans were very involved in the Jewish culture, and they did love their taxes, right? But who was this guy? He was a Pharisee. Now, what that means is he was a religious leader. He was very religious. He devoted his entire life to following God and practicing what they called the law or the commands of God. And there's a lot of them, um, over 600 of them, that they would have to follow perfectly. And if they didn't, they'd be sinful, and they had to do sacrifices and, and all these things. And all the Jewish people were supposed to do that, but these people took it to an nth degree. And they came kind of what's called haughty about it, right? They became uh, self-righteous in that. They thought that they could work their way into heaven. And, and you're not given this yet, and I don't want to spoil too much of the future, but Nicodemus is one of the most interesting guys in that group. See, those are the people that led Jesus to be flogged and to be killed and stuff. Those were the religious leaders. We don't know how much Nicodemus had a part in that, but we, we see some interactions with Nicodemus and Jesus that are pretty remarkable later on, and, and there'll be an episode with that in there where Nicodemus comes and asks Jesus a whole bunch of questions at night. And, and in the Bible, we're not told whether or not he's a believer. And uh, the Chosen series, again, takes some liberties to assume that he was. And through some other things in the Bible, we could probably allude to he probably was. He probably came to know Jesus Christ, which is powerful. And, and what's powerful about that is, listen, you may think you got it all figured out, that you have all the knowledge in the world, but there's probably something you might be missing. And, and at the end of the day, what you have to do is you have to trust God and give him, give him your life and say, like, wow, who is Jesus? And, and it's not about me. It's not about the works I could do to Jesus Christ, but, but what he could do through me and, and, and how Jesus is the true, the one true Messiah. It's not about me, and it's not about what I could do. I'm not my own God. Jesus is God, not me, all right? 
And, and, and that's the kind of where we're getting at with Nicodemus here. And we're going to hear more and more about him in the future. But here, who's the next person we come in contact? He was kind of an interesting guy too. And it was Matthew. Matthew, who was a tax collector. And, and, and you kind of notice he was kind of an interesting character, right? He uh, probably seemed OCD, and I'll get into that in a second. But, but you might be thinking, like, how do we know he's a tax collector? Was he a tax collector, right? There's so much speculation in this. And the answer is yes. We know he was a tax collector. It says in Matthew 9, 9, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting as a tax collector in a tax collector's booth. He said to him, follow me. He told him, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Now, I love how they give some backstory about who Matthew is, but again, we don't know this about Matthew, right? He was a numbers guy, right? He was a tax collector, so he was probably good at, like, accounting and things like that, which could have been, like, hey, maybe a person who's OCD or has, um, uh, is autistic, right? Those things more than likely existed back then. Right, those disorders, as they call them in our, our world today. Right, I'm not trying to label him, but here's the thing: we don't know that for sure. But I actually enjoyed this about what they did with the Chosen series. Right, and I heard an interview with him and the director Dallas, and and what they said is they were kind of blown away at how much this hit home for so many people. Right, there's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of people out there in the world who struggle with OCD and autism, and, and it's hard for them to relate to a lot of people. And here was someone in the story of Jesus that could have maybe fit that, that category, and it said it meant the world to them to see that. And they, I actually heard that they thought that he depicted someone that way, the actor, because he's not that way in real life, very well. So, so glory to God, if someone's coming to hear Jesus and maybe open up an avenue for them who otherwise wouldn't have, that, that was something really cool to me in that. But here's what we do know is that <clears throat> the point is that Matthew, and this is with all the characters you're going to hear today, Matthew was a real person. He had real issues, and he was looked down by other people. We know that about tax collectors. He was a Jewish person who was taxing his people for the Romans. The, to, to them, he was a cowardly dog, right? And, and you're going to see more through the story that Matthew had his reasonings for do it. And maybe it was his perfectionism that, that led him to be that way. That he saw that this was right and that he had to take care of himself and he wanted to take care of his family. Again, I don't want to spoil too much. It's a really impactful story. Again, all speculation. But it would make sense that it was probably something like that. And then a third, we come up to two characters you see kind of come together, and uh, the, it's kind of like scrappy guys, Peter and Andrew. Uh, first, I want to talk about um, Andrew a little bit. Andrew was the, uh, you see, see him here on the right here. Um, Andrew was actually the little brother of Peter. We know that for certain, too, that they were actually brothers. And we don't know a whole bunch about Andrew, but he was one of the 12. He was one of the closest, and he was actually one of the first disciples of Jesus, one of the first students of Jesus. And even before Jesus, he's the only one that we know of that was also a disciple of a guy named John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, who was uh, the, the bug eater that Peter jokes around with him out in the wilderness. And we're going to hear him here in a, in a few episodes too, and he's an interesting guy as well. He's interesting in the Bible, let, let alone... Um, in this whole whole situation, right? And, and so Andrew had been taking that in, and that he he was he was one of those guys, serious guy, right? And I think they showed that really well. He was kind of an analysis kind of guy, right? He analyzed things a lot, and he worried a lot, and that was true of what we know of Andrew. He was more of that type of person. But Peter, and they're both kind of rough and tumbly, right? And you see them, and it starts. It shows him, and he's in a fight, and they're like trying to kind of um, swindle some people out of their money doing this fight thing, right? N none of that's in the Bible either, speculation, but wouldn't that be cool if that was in, in there? I mean, but Peter was. He was a scrapper, right? There's a story when Jesus is being taken away uh, um, after the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's about to be crucified, and Peter pulls out a small sword, and he hacks this guy's ear off. <laughs> and Jesus stops him from continuing because he's so mad and he's trying to defend Jesus. And he stops him and he puts the guy's ear miraculously back on the guy's head, right? And then goes about his way. 
The thing that I love about this is, man, I, I resonate with Peter. Not that I'm just looking to hack people's ears off, but sometimes he acts first and thinks later. And I catch myself doing that. I'm a, I'm a reaction kind of guy, right? And, and sometimes I could be brash and different things like that. What's amazing, though, and you're going to see this as he gets to know Jesus, and as he processes who Jesus is, he's kind of, he's kind of what's interesting. He's the leader, but he's always the last to get it. And everybody's like, oh, man. And that's true. We, we know that. You could read that in the Bible for itself, that that's the kind of person Peter was. He was the leader among them. He was bold, but he was also brash. He was a brash man. And what ended up happening was Jesus used him in spite of those things. Because Jesus showed, is trying to show them that it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, God can use you. It's not about you and your qualifications. We've talked about this before. It's about Jesus and that he is the workman. He is the master here. He's the, he's the potter and we're the clay. And he wants to mold us into beautiful creation. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Or if you've been a cheater or a liar or anything like that, he can still use you. It doesn't mean you stay that way. But it means that he can use you. And then we come to the last one, and the one we're going to focus on the most tonight, and that's Mary Magdalene. Real character in the Bible, but Mary in a very dark history, and, excuse me, but also a very broken past, and, and that was true in the Bible. But I will tell you, Mary is the person who's probably clouded the most with, uh, with who she was. And the problem is, is like just about every other woman in the Bible was named Mary. Even Jesus' mother was named Mary, right? And there's several different Marys in there. There's actually a Mary of Bethany in the Bible that's thought to not actually be the Mary Magdalene, but could have been. We don't know. It's all speculation. Uh, some people think that Mary was actually, Mary Magdalene was actually Jesus' wife. I don't think that to be true. Um, I, I don't think the Bible gives us any room for that. And actually, who Jesus was, it would speak against who Jesus was. He was not married. And married to Mary, if you want to. Um, and so there's nothing on that. There's some fake gospels out there that try to assume this, and there's no validity to them. And, and, and why that is important is not because we don't want Jesus to be married and just that fact. It's because it actually downplays what God did through Mary's life. Mary is a miraculous person to, to be in the Bible. Because of her past and because of even her gender, it was so crazy that God was using her. So let me read this, and I'll explain that a little bit more. This is the first passage we come to um, about Mary and who she was. And she was one of the earliest followers of Jesus as well. And they depict that very well in this, uh, in this video. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been uh, cured of evil spirits and diseases. Um, Mary, Magdalene, Mary called Magdalene, and from whom seven demons came out. So here, here's the situation. Mary, and you saw in the video, right? She had demons, and, and some, people, uh, some people believe that demon possession was mental illness. And, and there is some proof to say that those were linked, that anytime someone had mental illness, they thought they had a demon in them, and that might have not necessarily been true. They could have had just mental illness. But in this situation, we can almost certainly uh, assume that it was a demon, not just because that's how it plainly says it, but it says seven spirits came out of Mary. And, and that showed the severity of the situation that was going on there. And, and, and I'll get into a little bit more about some of the things that we uh, suppose that could have been from Mary's background, but we don't know for sure. But I want to take you back a second to think about why is it such a big deal that Mary is here? Well, sadly, it's not 2020 during this, this uh, story. This was uh, 2,000 years ago. And women, sadly, were not looked at that way. Women, and I don't know this. I know this probably doesn't surprise you, but women uh, weren't even uh, a citizen uh, then. They had no rights hardly at all during this time, and, and their testimony wasn't worth anything. And yet, 
we see this in the Bible, and we see this uh, uh, many other testimonies of women in the Bible, and the fact that Mary, outside of the apostles, the people who are closest to Jesus, we hear about her more than any other person in the Bible outside of the apostles, tells you how much women were important to what Jesus was doing. And the world might tell them that you're worth nothing, but here's Jesus, and, and we see it very clearly in, in her story where he says, you are mine. Not in a romantic way, but in the, the part that he is God and that he sees her as his sheep and he's the shepherd. And it's this beautiful, beautiful relationship. And, and so again, I pull that out because it doesn't matter where you come from, where you've been. God wants you to come towards him. He longs for you to come towards him. And there's power in that. So who was Mary? Mary, you know what? Some people think that she was a prostitute. And, and, and in that story, you know, if you don't want a prostitute, is, go ask your parents, please. But I, I'm assuming that you probably know what that is, right? But if you look at the video, what do they do? They put her in the red light district is what it was called. And that, that the red area is what they called it. And any area like that was the not-so-okay area of town where things like that happened. Maybe. We don't know for certain. But there's another story about a woman who was caught in adultery, and a lot of people think that that was Mary Magdalene. We don't know. Maybe. Could have been. Where the, the religious leaders bring her before Jesus, and they're like, this woman was caught in adultery. What should, what should we do? You know, the Bible tells us to stone her. And Jesus writes a, a line in the sand. It says, you know, the one who is not guilty of sin, throw the first stone. And he goes back to riding in the sand, and no one throws a stone and leaves the woman right there. And, and Jesus says, where are your accusers? And so they have all left, is what the woman says, Mary, maybe Mary Magdalene. And, and, and what ends up happening is he says, I, so I don't, uh, I don't persecute you either. The one person who was without sin, who could have thrown the stone, forgave her. Probably because he knew the whole story, and it wasn't so black and white. She might have been kind of adultery, but was it because of her own doing was she forced into that? And again, this video takes some liberties with that to assume maybe that was the case. If you're watching closely, you probably saw that. Maybe. Maybe more than likely that was the case. But here's the thing that's powerful, is it doesn't matter. If she was the one who initiated adultery, if she wanted to be in prostitution and it sent her down paths that she otherwise didn't think it would ever take her, you know what? Jesus still loves her. And he still loves you. And there's nothing that you can separate you from God. Doesn't mean we stay that way. It's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to, not, to stay that way. We can't stay that way. We can't continue to live in sin and expect God to continue to be there for us time and time again. But I thought it was so powerful. You see this ending, and, and it kind of depicts her as having mental illness and having demons and different things. Like It could have been either one, right? And what ends up happening is, is you see this story about her and her father, and she, he's reading that scripture to her. Again, we don't know. There's nothing in the Bible about that. That scripture was in the Bible. And you're going to practice something in your cell groups here in a little bit, but I want to read this through and later, when you get time and you're talking to your cell groups, I want you to put your name in this place. Because this is why this passage is so powerful. And when you see Jesus approach her at the very end, he starts quoting that scripture because he knew, because he was God, how much it meant to her. And that could have very well happened. But this is what the scripture says, and this is definitely a truth here. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, it says, But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, put your name there, Billy. Jacob, he who formed you, Billy, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you, Billy, right? And you, whatever your name is. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Ooh, that's a powerful text, right? There's a lot of history behind that and a lot of different things, but here's the thing I know to be true is the God who is the Savior in that situation is the Savior for us today. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, um, 
that it doesn't matter what you're going through. You might, it might feel like your whole life is on fire. It may feel like there's so many things going on in your world that, that you, you don't see a way out. You feel stressed out. You, you're worried about the future. But here's the thing. God's outside of time. God knows exactly where you're at. He knows your name, and he longs for you to know him. So let's say it this way. Let's say it this way. Maybe you feel like Nicodemus. You go to church every week, read your Bible all the time. You look at your peers and you think, what, what the heck are they doing? But maybe you don't have a relationship with God. Maybe you're, you're, you see that you could work and you could do all these things and you're a perfectionist. Maybe kind of like Matthew was, and, and, and it's all in the numbers. It's all in, it's all in uh, you just getting your life together in order, and everything has to be orderly, and then everything's going to be okay. But the world is messy all around you, too. And nothing you could do can clean yourself up, let alone everything else around you. You can't do it. Your, your perfection is never going to win. Or maybe you feel like Peter and Andrew, who, who are scrappers, right? They're going to do whatever it takes to, to get, get what they need, to get by, to make it on top. And you're willing to steal and cheat and, and, and rob your way to the top. You know what? Yeah, God's not with that. But God is with you, and God does want to be with you, and he wants you to repent and turn away from that kind of life and follow him. Or maybe you're Mary Magdalene. It doesn't matter if you're male or female in this situation, right? Maybe you feel taken advantage of and you've gone through some really hard and dark times. And you feel overwhelmed by the pressures of this world. By all the things that have been trying to devour you and destroy you. Listen, it's never too late to turn to Jesus and say, God, I, I want to know you, and I want to know your name. I want to be know that I belong to you, and that you have plans for me. You're going to lead me out of this place. Lead me out of the fire. Lead me out of these, uh, these, these, this storm of life, this, these bad waters, like it ta- teaches us in Isaiah 43. Listen, the same God that walked with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and Andrew, with Matthew, with Nicodemus, wants to walk with you in your life. The question is, are you going to surrender? Are you going to trust in him? Are you going to get in the boat with him? Are you going to follow him? See, now that choice is up to you. He's calling. He's saying, I'm here, and I want you. Are you going to hear the shepherd's voice, and are you going to come? I pray you do. Let me pray for you. Bow, bow your heads, if you would, with me, and, and get into a discussion. Maybe ask some good questions. Don't just sit there and wonder what this means or how this implies to your life. Ask good questions. Don't stop. Let me pray for you. God, I come to you. I'm grateful, Lord, that you walked with these people, Lord, that they could be uh, the trailblazers for us, that you, the leading the examples for us, Lord, that you are still willing to do this with us today, that you call us out of these dark places, out of our perfection, our self-righteousness, and you can call us into a better way, a better life, Lord, an abundant life that is with you. Where you are Lord, you are God, and we are not. And Lord, to do that, maybe we have to give up some things. Maybe we have to turn away from things, repent from some things, God. And I pray that you speak to these young people tonight. Maybe there's something that they need to lay at your feet and say, I'm leaving this, God. I'm following you. Lord, you know what these situations are. Lord, help us as leaders speak into them boldly and fiercely for you and your kingdom. God, be with us tonight as we get into this conversation more and more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Get into your discussions uh, or do some worship. If you didn't do the worship, either one's fine. I hope to see you later.